Hello and welcome to my video content production course. Today I'm going to show you a couple of very simple methods to create great videos for all of your social networking platforms. So let's get started. Okay, first things first. You don't have to go out and buy an expensive video camera because you most likely have one already. Cell phone video has come a long way. Here are some details. Most current smartphones have built-in video camera capability. The biggest benefits of shooting with a cell phone are the auto settings. These include auto focus, auto exposure, and auto color balance. This is a perfect situation for people just starting out. For today's shoot, you'll need a couple pieces of equipment that shouldn't be too expensive. A wireless microphone is the best choice to ensure high quality audio. This adapter is also necessary for the audio to work properly. Some basic lighting will further enhance your video quality. In many cases, a tripod is an absolute must, especially when you're shooting your video alone. This very common cell phone mount attaches your cell phone to the tripod. We'll demonstrate this complete setup after we talk about our location. Next, we're gonna talk about location. We're doing an ad for a finance company, so I've chosen the bookcases as my background. I feel like those two subjects just sort of go together. Let's take a look at the camera setup. This is our camera and tripod setup. To achieve this setup, attach the cell phone mount to the tripod. Then set the cell phone into the groove and slide the top down to secure the phone. Insert the single end of the adapter into the phone's audio port. On the other end of the adapter, you'll find two receptacles. One is for headphones so you can listen to the audio after recording only. The other is to connect your wireless receiver. Once you've turned on your transmitter and receiver, audio should be going to your phone. You may want to do some testing before you start your official shoot. Now your camera is set up and ready to shoot. Set up your lights at about 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock. Turn in toward the subject. Both lights should be about the same distance from the subject. Both should be set at the same intensity level if you have a dimmer setting. At this point, you may want to do some test shots to make sure you're getting a nice shot as well as good audio. If your shot looks grainy like this one, you're most likely not putting enough light on the subject. To fix this, increase the light level using the dial on the back of the lights. If your lights do not have an intensity dial, simply move the lights closer to the subject. You may want to run another test to ensure that the grain issue is resolved. It's also a good idea to write down everything that you did during the first setup to save yourself some time during future shoots. Okay, so I have my mic on, I've tested it so I know I'm getting good audio. The cell phone is working its magic with the auto settings and all I need now is lighting. The available light in this room right now, it's, it's okay, but it could be better and that's why we're bringing in lights. So I wanna turn on the first light, show you what that looks like. You see, that's already better. Let me turn on the second light. Okay, that looks good. A nice, even, illuminated area, but we're gonna take it a step further. There's a little setting that you could do with the iPhone where if you wanna lock in a certain focus or a certain light level, you just press and hold. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna press and hold, and I'm gonna make some adjustments so I have it just the way I want. And yes, I like the way that one looks. So I'm gonna leave my settings locked in and I'm gonna do my read. Before I do the read, I'm gonna change clothes so I look the part a little bit better. I'll be right back. Okay, three, two, one. You know, peace of mind is priceless. At Wellington Financial, we do extensive research on each and every investment that we offer so you don't have to. Ah, peace of mind. All right, so that was pretty good. At this point, if you're happy with the read, you're ready to move on to editing. I'm pretty happy with what I did just now, so I'm gonna move on to editing. Okay, we're ready to edit. I'm using a MacBook Pro. I've taken the raw video that we shot and I've transported it to my desktop and we're ready to edit. So let's jump on in. So here's our video clip. I've titled it Raw Announcer. Below that clip is a company logo for Wellington Financial in JPEG format. We'll end our video with that logo for proper marketing. The first thing we'll do is open up the video clip with QuickTime Player. I'm using version 10.5. You'll notice that there's quite a bit of video before the announcer begins speaking. We want to cut that out. To do that, we'll use the Trim tool. Go to Edit and select Trim. The video is now surrounded by this yellow box. On each end, you'll find handles that you can use to select the portion of the video that you want to keep. Click, hold, and slide the handle to where you'd like the video to start. Do the same with the other handle to select where you'd like the video to end. 
Now hit play to see what you've got. You know, peace of mind is priceless. At Wellington Financial, we do extensive research on each and every investment that we offer, so you don't have to. Ah, peace of mind. And click trim on the far right. Perfect. Now let's add the logo graphic. We have a small issue with adding the graphic. QuickTime Player only allows you to add another video clip to the current video clip. As a result, we must create a video clip of the graphic. Here's one quick easy method to accomplish that. Open the logo file, choose a screen recorder. I'm using the screenshot app that comes with Mac. There are all sorts of screen recorders out there and a lot of them come with PC or Mac or they're available free for download from the internet. I'm gonna click on record selected portion. Select only the portion that I want with this box and hit record. Wait about 10 seconds or so. Click stop at the top of the screen and your video has been created. Click on done and you see your video of the logo on your desktop. Now go back to your original video in QuickTime. Go to edit and select add clip to end. This screen will pop up so you can select the video clip that you'd like to add. Select your video of the logo and click choose media. You now have two clips side by side. We want to shorten the logo up a bit. So with the logo video highlighted, go to edit and click trim. Trim the video down to five seconds and click trim on the far right. Now you're back to the view with the two videos side by side. Click done and your video has been created. You know, peace of mind is priceless. At Wellington Financial, we do extensive research on each and every investment that we offer, so you don't have to. Ah, peace of mind. At this point, you wanna export your video. Go to File, Export As, and choose 720. This should be a decent size for uploading to social networking sites. Name your file, choose a destination, and click Save. And there you are, done. You're ready to upload your video to all of your social networking sites. So as you can tell, combining music with the video makes the overall ad so much better. However, with QuickTime, I've discovered that this is not exactly the best place to add music to a video. You're gonna have to use a video editor, and here's the video editor that I use. This is iMovie, a basic editing app that comes with Mac computers. iMovie is a very good introduction to video editing because the functionality is very similar to many video editing apps on both Mac and PC. When you open up iMovie for the first time, you'll either see this screen or this screen. Click on the Projects button to make sure you're on the screen where you see a box with a plus and Create New written below. Click Create New, then select Movie and you'll be taken to this screen. You'll notice that the name of the project is My Movie. We'll stay with that for now. As you can see, the workspace is made up of four main areas. The far left box is where all of our materials will be stored. The next box is where we'll select things. This box is where we'll view things. And this area down here is where we'll build our video. This area is called the timeline. It consists of a video track and a music track. Don't worry, all this will make sense pretty quickly. We won't be dealing with these two items during this training. iMovie Library is where we'll be storing all of our materials. Before we start, let's change the name of this library to Wellington Financial just to stay organized. You'll notice a date underneath the word library. This is a default name that iMovie uses. Let's change the name to Announcer. Click to highlight and change the name to Announcer. This is sort of a holding area for our announcer clip. We'll also need holding areas for our graphic and our music. By the way, these holding areas are actually called events. Let's create another event. Right click and select new event. Click to highlight and change the name to graphic. And the same for our music. Now we'll import our materials. This is very simple. Click announcer, import media. That will bring up this import screen. Our materials are on the desktop so select desktop, select your video and click import selected. Now do the exact same thing for our graphic and our music.
Great. We have our three elements, video, graphic, and music, and we're ready to build our video. Building a video is pretty simple. You simply take things from here and put them here. Let's start with our announcer. Select announcer here. And when you click on the video here, the entire clip is highlighted. You'll notice some handles on the right side and on the left side of the clip. These are your in point and out point. To select a particular portion of video, simply place your in point where you'd like to start and your out point where you'd like to finish. Now you see this plus sign. Click on that and the video drops right down into the timeline. We'll do the same thing with the graphic. Leave the playhead in place at the end of the first clip. Notice this time that there are no handles on the left and the right. Just click to highlight and click on the plus sign. The nice part about using a JPEG in iMovie is you don't have to convert it into a video clip. iMovie does it for you. Once the clip is in the timeline, you have the option to make it longer or shorter. We'll leave the logo up for about six seconds. So now we have our announcer speaking and when he's done, up pops the logo. Great marketing. Let's play the clip to see that everything is working. Move the playhead to the beginning and hit the space bar to play. You know, peace of mind is priceless. At Wellington Financial, we do extensive research on each and every investment that we offer, so you don't have to. Ah, peace of mind. Looking good. Now let's add that music we were talking about. Move the playhead to the beginning of the clip and left click in the gray area to keep it in place. Select music. Click on the clip to highlight and you'll see those endpoints and outpoints again. Position your endpoints and outpoints to select the portion of the music that you want. Hit the plus sign and the audio drops into the timeline. Let's play a portion. Each and every investment. Okay, that music is a bit high. To adjust the audio level, hover over the horizontal line in the music track. Click, hold, and drag down to your desired audio level. Let's play again to check our levels. Research on each and every investment that we offer. Sounds great. You'll notice that the music track is longer than the video track. No problem. Simply go to the end of the track, hover over until you see two arrows, Click, hold, and drag to match the video track. There are two additional things we should do to enhance the quality of our project. When the logo appears, we want to raise the music level. And towards the end of the video, we want to fade the music down. Here's how. Play the last part of the announcer's message. Ah, as soon as he's done, hit the play bar to stop. This is where we'll begin raising our music level. Position the mouse where the playhead and horizontal line cross. Hold down the Alt key and left click. A little dot should appear. Move the mouse slightly to the right and repeat. Hold Alt, left click. Another dot appears. Now, move to the right of your dots, hover over the horizontal line, and drag up to your desired audio level. Okay, this part is easy. See the green dot here on the end? Click, hold, and drag to the left. This arch indicates that the music is fading down. Now let's play the entire piece to see what we have. You know, peace of mind is priceless. At Wellington Financial, we do extensive research on each and every investment that we offer, so you don't have to. Ah, peace of mind. Perfect. Our video is ready to export and post. You're going to use this button in the upper right hand corner. Click and up comes the export box. At this point you have some choices to make. This is what I suggest. Choose a title. Format should be video and audio. Resolution 720. Quality high. Compress better quality. Now hit next, choose a destination, and hit save. Okay, you're done. Your project is now ready to upload to any of your social networks. Whether you use some or all of the methods that I've demonstrated, 
the content that you create is about to get a whole lot better. Thank you so much for watching. Now get out there and start creating.